Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and it's Brick Hall O'Clock with one package from Bricklink.com and another sent into my PO box from a subscriber. Ooh! Well, as is tradition, I think I'll go for the subscriber sent in package first because I'm always very grateful to receive one of those. And if you want to send something into the channel, you can to the usual address as this subscriber did. And you don't have to send bricks, you can send pictures of your Lego City or, I don't know, instructions or stickers that you don't need anymore or whatever you want to send really. Uh, oh, it's quite hard to get into this one. Oh, that's because we've got a package within a package. I think we need to do more cutting. And, yeah, might be even more packaging in between that. It's like past the parcel, this. And within all of that, we have got, yep, you guessed it, more packaging. <laughs> what on earth? Right, so I've cut into that one, and we have got some stuff. Yep, you guessed it, in more packaging, but this looks like it might be, oh, wow, the final level. Wow, this is some really vintage parts. I mean, look at that, we've got a really old forestman for a start. <laughs> right, well, we better get onto the letter before I get into that. But as you can probably tell, I'm quite excited. Oh, wow. Got some good photographs here. So the letter says, Hello, Robin. I saw the state of those space antennas and went up into the roof and sorted out a few period correct old grey versions that I used to use from 1979 to 81. Oh, wow. So that was as part of my recent train build for my classic space uh, hopper wagon. Um, while I was there, I found some old horses and shields for you to use as possible castle pageant. Sorry about the print quality. The work printer isn't playing ball. When you showed your very cool space hopper wagon, I had this set built on the floor at the time. Uh, that he's talking about the set that inspired that, this wonderful uh, space station here with what I've been calling space hoppers on there. And there are the instructions, or is that the box in the background? Hard to tell. Oh, wow, he's got another box there. Oh, that was that was my very first uh, classic Lego space set, that little uh, space scooter thing there. Oh, wow. Oh, I love these old bases. Never had those. Um, sorry, I've, I've stopped reading your letter now. Uh, I had this set built on the floor at the time, along with the classic Lego T-shirt that Sheldon wears. Ah, yes. Hope these elements help you out. One last thing... That long white fence type strip is a piece from an old set. Right, that. Yes, no, I do recognise that. I think that was used on sort of train lighting and stuff like that, wasn't it? Kind regards, Barry. Oh, Barry again, you're sending me all your stuff. You're so generous. But um, wow, that is really good quality as well, it looks. All these whites are really white still. Very jealous of that wonderful collection you've got. Oh, absolutely amazing, isn't it? And these base plates are hard to get hold of now as well. But yes, that is absolutely amazing. Anyone who uh, loves classic space will be massively jealous of that. Oh, and here's a close-up look. Here's the other picture. I don't think these are bad print quality at all, actually, Barry. Yeah, and that's what I was calling the, the weird sort of space office for office admin, because you have two of them just sat there. I don't know really what they're doing, just having a nice sort of sit down and a read, possibly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, they are brilliant. But look at this bag of absolute treats. Wow. So, we've got some old grey parts, mainly plates, but including some vital uh, antenna, because the story is that I was going to add some of these uh, antenna pieces to my build, but basically all the ones I managed to get hold of were absolutely bitten to bits. Uh, but these look in much better condition than the ones I had. I mean, it's really hard to get any that are absolutely mint now. I mean, they'd just be worth a fortune, presumably. But they look much better than mine. So that's really great. I think I'll tidy them up and I might go back to that space hopper and add them. I just need to make sure that there's sufficient clearance around with all those sort of bits hanging off the hoppers that they can still sort of bounce around freely without hitting any of these, of course. Uh, and then we've got loads of night stuff. Which I'm really keen to get my hands on. We've got, wow, one, two, three, four, five horses, and two of them have got the wonderful sort of barding on, one with this red dragon on the blue backdrop, and this one with, ah, 
a blue dragon on a black backdrop. So we can have uh, two knights sort of jousting. These are absolutely amazing. Amazing quality as well. Absolutely no scratches to them. So they've obviously been looked after or just maybe safe in your loft. <laughs> but they look so beautiful, don't they? And then, well, to join the gang, a forest man. You can either be in my new gift we purchased forestman's uh, hideout or you can be joining the gang on the desk, of course. I'm going to have quite a few of these because there's a new uh, castle coming out this summer, of course. So all of this will fit absolutely perfectly into all of that, given that it's, well, pretty much inspired by that after all. So, yeah, we'll have loads of forestmen of all sorts of descriptions. This is absolutely amazing. Oh, wow. Got one of the old Black Falcon Knights, but he's got the blue cape. I imagine that's quite hard to get hold of. We've got lots of helmets. We've got one with a lion torso. That is absolutely mint condition. One with the crossed axes. So yeah, this is really good for pageantry, isn't it? We can just have all the different sort of uh, uh, clans, so to speak, all coming into Brick Nottingham. And there's the old Black Falcon shield. There are two. This is the one with the yellow border. There was one with the blue border as well, but you really don't... Oh, there you go. <laughs> as if on cue. Uh, you really don't need both, I was about to say. But uh, wow, we've got both now. I'm going to have to think of something to display all this in the city because it's just too good to not. Oh, look at that. We've got a dragon shield. Absolutely brilliant. The yellow-backed uh, lion shield. There'll be the opposite of that in a minute. Two of those. Three of those. Now I've preempted it and there isn't one. <laughs> and another dragon one. But I think there's a, I think from memory it's a blue backdrop to that one. Oh, we've even got some feathers. So the red feather's a bit overdone in my gang. So why not have a yellow feathered guy for this? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, and we've got some brown shield. Ah, oh, so these are the original forestman shields. Oh, wow. I have to compare and contrast those with the new ones. They're probably exactly the same, but wow. Oh, my word. So generous. And then we've got the very old uh, sort of princess sort of cone hat, which would go on... I don't know if it'd go on this character. Um, no, because she looks more like a pirate lady in a way, or maybe just a sort of serving wench at the local tavern or something like that. But I'm not sure she's supposed to have that hat, but it still looks pretty good. And there's another forestman's hat, actually, this time in brown, which the old ones had as well as the green. So I'll be able to either use uh, some of these parts to make a lady forestman or uh, maybe just add it to one of my other ones for variety. So that is really good. Wow. Computers, cutlasses, legs, loads of helmets, loads of weapons, lances, spears, a parrot. I really don't need any more parrots, people, unless they're the ridiculously rare colours. <laughs> and then this, which is actually two pieces, if I remember rightly. I'm a bit reluctant. There we go, to pull them apart. That is kind of an old-fashioned bracket, just to, well, mount the other bit, as you can probably imagine. And then you used to have either electrical um, train lighting on this, or platform lighting for stations and stuff like that, or probably a myriad of other different things. But I'll have to think of an interesting way to use that because it's a really nice piece, isn't it? Yeah, I think it even sort of supported, you know, lifts sort of going up and down and so on. Wow. Well, the pitch is a great Barry, and I would have been happy just to receive those because they are a real blast from the past. And I absolutely love this one with the full setup. Uh, and just looking at that with its original box is a real memory for me as well. So that is great. But then this stuff... Golly, you've just been so generous again. I love the Black Falcon stuff and this um, blue cloak. So I have to build up him, probably put him on this horse, uh, maybe with a black helmet, and he'll look well mean for uh, my castle scene. Oh, and I've, I've, I've not even got any of these pointy helmets. These used to be the helmets for the archers, didn't they? Oh, yes. Wow, so much to play with. Uh, <laughs> very exciting. We can even have some horses for the outlaws. Oh, yes. Uh, very good indeed. Thanks so much for that. That is so greatly appreciated. It was worth the eight layers of wrapping just to get to. <laughs> right, I'm going to tidy up here uh, and then we can get on with the BrickLink package. Wow, it just looks so amazing, all this stuff. I've just pieced together this knight uh, and isn't he wonderful? He may have the wrong helmet on at the moment for my liking because I think he should have a sort of helm with one of those visors that comes down. But that is just brilliant classic Lego. And this the, the real 
uh, cherry on the top is this cloak. It just looks absolutely perfect. It's just the little subtle differences that make a, uh, a reminiscence absolutely perfect. That is just so good. Brilliant. And in all that uh, excitement, I actually forgot to mention the uh, retro police bike that was there the whole time in a, in a bag uh, at the back with these nice tiles on the side. And this is the old style sort of windscreen type visor that you could kind of clip on the front for those who don't know. So that's really nice as well. Might have to get an old style policeman to be riding that because it wouldn't really work with a new one, would it? Like a, a Duke Detain or whatever. So there we go. Wonderful. So now we can get on to our Bricklink package, which I think will be less exciting, actually. A bit of an anticlimax, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. There's certainly loads of pieces I need for loads of little projects. Uh, and this was kind of an order that was triggered by one particular piece, but then the vendor actually had quite a few other things that I needed for other things. So, just tip all this out. There we go. That, yep, that is everything. So it's not huge. Oh, and they've given me some free Lego cards, which I will get to later. Yes, yeah, so this actually is the piece that I wanted uh, very desperately in, well, good condition, hopefully. Yep, great. Uh, and I wanted two of them, and they're actually surprisingly rare. You may think you've got loads of these, and they're quite common, but you're probably thinking of the smaller ones that are 12 long uh, by 6. These are the 16 by 6 ones, and I wanted two to make a huge billboard with, with loads of sort of 3D detail on. Uh, so I won't give any more away than that, other than to say that that build can now commence. And there's a few other billboards I've got lined up. And then I really must get on with actually adding them to my city. So these are the parts that were hardest to get that I'm really glad to get in great condition because it'd be very visible being a billboard. Um, and the rest was really to see what else this person had that I would be able to use in future projects. So let's get on without any further dithering. Here is a roof piece that definitely needs its sticker moving using my patented hot tea technique. Uh, now this came in the set 60109 Fireboat from 2016 uh, and I've kind of been collecting them. I mean there's lots of different roof uh, types like this. I used a different one that's sort of all rusting on my cargo uh, racking uh, and this was going to be one option for that but it didn't seem to be right with the, all these sort of shingles on uh, and this green moss. So I'm gonna have to use these for something else. I don't know what exactly really. I think I might be using them in my harbour I suppose. That's one option. Uh, as some sort of facades there. But anyway, I think I've got about four of those now, so I've probably got enough. Uh, but it does look really good, even on that tiny little shack that's in that set. I think it looks absolutely perfect. So, uh, yeah, I'll keep collecting those for a little bit, perhaps. Uh, then more stickered and interesting parts. We've had this many times before for the premiere that's going on at the uh, cinema in Brick Nottingham. The Brick Separator. Uh, with a, a little monster that I do kind of plan to make in a way out of a green brick separator, uh, kind of like a big alien that's uh, chasing people down. Uh, but anyway, that is just going to be for a small advert in my city, perhaps on the side of a bus or something like that. And that's indeed where it came from, actually. 40220 London bus from 2016, which was a kind of small bus, but a promotional one. Uh, we've seen these loads of times, just collecting them for the O2 caution signs. That's from the Sub 60092 Deep Sea Submarine. This is just a tread plate on a brick, so it's kind of two parts in one. And whenever I see them for about 10p, I think, right, I'll have that because, well, it's half price for each, really. <laughs> then we've got this, which is obviously from a friend set, but I quite liked it because it's quite nice to have a calendar on a wall here and there. And this one with the sort of heart with its weights, I thought... You know, it was kind of like promoting exercise, so maybe it'd be in at sweat or something like that. Uh, so that's from set 41340, Friendship House from 2018, which looks like a very fun house to live in with a fireman pole, <laughs> a slide, and even a nice looking winch actually up the front there. That looked really quite a good build. It might be quite hard to get at the stuff in the basket uh, inside on that winch with a uh, you know, the access to the windows being the type that fold out because you'd be kind of pushing it away when you opened your window. But uh, anyway, I'm sure the uh, people who enjoy that set don't worry about that minor detail. But that's a really nice sticker just for pennies. And then these two, which are very old and kind of with this snowflake pattern 
I mean, what I think of immediately with one of these is kind of a snowplow, you know, going along in winter, chuntering along the streets, and it'd have a logo like this, but it didn't come from a snow uh, plow. It came from 8660 Arctic Rescue Unit from 1986. Uh, so I was thinking this could be used for a refrigerated uh, cargo wagon for my train, but I've already done one of those with all the penguins inside and the fish transport signs. So I figure this might be a smaller build, maybe a refrigerated cargo container instead. So it'd have to be enclosed, obviously, otherwise the refrigeration wouldn't work. But that's definitely a really good logo for that. But if you can think of a better place I could use these, uh, do let me know. Because I, do, I really want to get them into the city. But uh, I don't really need a snowplow in Brick Notting because we don't get the most amount of snow, I must say. Wow, so that bag alone was fantastic, wasn't it? Let's look at this. Some big bionicle pieces and so on. Oh, golly, that's a stiff bag. Right, so first of all, we've got these huge tridents, which I thought we could decorate my deep sea cabinet with. Uh, either as weapons, kind of on the front of a submarine, or maybe just as decor for some deep sea civilization or something that might be going on with either my, uh, what they're called, I'm calling them mermen now, but but the, the swamp creatures, that's what I'm thinking of. Uh, but they were used as a weapon uh, on the original set they came in, which was set 7773, Tiger Shark Attack. Uh, so I might use them in that sort of format, but yeah, I don't really know. But they're definitely very good. They're kind of a Technic axle on all of the back half. Uh, so they're quite big. So a minifigure definitely won't be able to grab them, not without some sort of accessory uh, in between his hand and this. But they're very big and very nice. And these look practically new. So anyway, so there's two of those. Now we've had these before, but I thought I'd get a few more and I was gonna use them kind of a spiky coral, maybe at an angle like that. So now I've got four, I think I've got four. It'll be a really good patch. Uh, so those are from the character Metus 8976 from 2009, uh, where they're part of his shield and also another set. Uh, but yeah, I really like that color as well because it's kind of trans light blue, but it's kind of frosty as well. So as long as I can hide that sort of mechanical looking bit in the middle, I think it's a really good sort of plant. Maybe angle them sort of towing in or towing out a bit, sort of like that or something. It'll look really special, I think, in my cabinet. Here's another barnacle piece. So this is kind of a headpiece uh, and a sort of, you know, hat would go on top of that. Probably not a hat, but the outside of the head sort of thing. And these teeth would stick through. And the catalogue says that they glow in the dark. So I'm just going to test that with my ultraviolet torch and oh they do that's sort of like a coating then isn't it because i sort of thought the whole piece might glow but it really is just the teeth <laughs> that is weird okay so that would be the teeth sort of showing through between sort of armor pieces on the original builds i'm not sure how i'm going to be able to use that i had sort of visions of maybe uh you know a fish build going around this or something like that and having the teeth showing like it was sort of glowing a dark piranha or something but um i don't know that's going to be quite tricky to use isn't it but i'm glad i bought it just for the uh, knowledge of it because it was only a few pennies and uh wow it's just amazing isn't it maybe i could just have the teeth just in a cave uh you know glowing almost like the inference of a great big creature with these teeth but you can't see it <laughs> that might be quite good fun but um yeah very interesting indeed i'm glad i got it Right, next bag, very colourful. I think we might have done most of the interesting pieces first, but don't turn off. Uh, one big, great big arch. Some more of these fence pieces I keep collecting for my fairground for all of the lines. Uh, some of these attachments to attach uh, arms to the walls of my undersea. Some of those for the undersea. That was for my whale, actually, to replace some of those um, wedge plates to replace three of them with one of these it's the only one i've got so i probably won't bother until at least got another one of those these are for a build i'm not going to tell you about uh two of those they're quite hard to get hold of in blue and then some white seats i only got these because they were about 5p each and i thought yep gone i'll have six of those it's good to have a quantity of them so when you build something you can use fully one color i thought the last bag was colorful but check that out wow so we have got all sorts. We've got two great big Mosasaur uh, fin pieces. So I've already made the Mosasaur and without the fin on as well, uh, because it's kind of a kit where you can make loads of different dinosaurs with 
uh, one set, but it was the set 6721 Mosasaurus from 2001. Uh, and I guess I'll be using these again as plants. I mean, they pretty much look like it already. You could just have them sticking out vertically or horizontally maybe with something else sort of growing over the top or something. So even though it's this very drab old dark gray, uh, I still think they're great for their shape and the fact that they're not symmetrical. So you can kind of use them almost sort of going around a corner a bit. Yeah, like those, put those back there. Lots of these sort of fingers that were used in uh, Chima sets as kind of ribs or something like that on big ancient woolly mammoths. And then loads of tentacles. So I've got some in the very interesting, uh, what is it called, medium orange? Anyway, you'll see that it's slightly different from normal orange because that's normal orange. Uh, just normal sort of dinosaur tails. These sort of dinosaur tails sort of midsections in lime. And then these are really nice. Now I've had these before as part of that Mosasaur set actually in sand blue, but these are sand green. Very nice. And they look quite leafy if you ask me. So again, they'll be a plant under the sea. Very leafy indeed. Uh, so these um, were part of a different dinosaur in that range where you could build loads of different things, but they were also part of the absolutely fabulous 7018 Viking ship and the Midgard Serpent from 2005. And wow, that is a very cool set. Very cool serpent build as well. Uh, I've nearly bought the head for that on several times in the uh, past, but never have because I kind of think it looks a bit too snaky for Under the Sea. But um, that boat with those shields, they're all printed, those shields, and that sail, oh, absolutely amazing. I mean, it kind of puts the recent Viking ship to shame, if you ask me. Uh, especially with the inclusion of a beastie uh, and loads of really cool minifigures actually. So anyway, I'm wittering, uh, but I've got five of those. So that's really nice. Another nice color to have under the sea. Dome piece, this time in trans neon yellow. So that will fluoresce like crazy. Loads more of these sort of barnacle flames for under the sea. I'm just gonna have great big patches of this stuff. All different colours, bluey, greeny, yellow, reddy, orangey, yellow, and more of those ones in trans yellow. We've got, wow, a massive bag of arm pieces. Now, these are in blue for an interesting plant, but mainly in trans neon orange. And they'll collect, uh, connect together to make a very sort of bendy, long wispy plant that can just go in any old direction you want i mean these really can move around and they were used on all the sort of robot arms under the sea but i'm definitely going to use them as plants on the lowest of my sea levels where you know uv light will absolutely make them glow and just to get a bit of an idea i mean you can just see that it's just going to absolutely glow like crazy all of this stuff oh yes Seems like a long way off because I've got a lot of projects on at the moment, but you know, we'll get there. We will get there. Please be patient. Right. Small parts are often the most expensive or precious. And here's a really another good sangreen undersea part being the sangreen version of the octopus sort of hat. Uh, and that is from only one set, Garmadon's Volcano Lair 70631, where it's on the character Four Eyes. I think I've got two of those in that color now. Uh, and more in the orange, dark orange colour as well. But they're just so fabulous. I just can't stop buying them whenever I see them. Uh, and then we've got this costume for a pizza slice from the Series 19 Pizza Costume Guy. Uh, so that might get used in a 3D sign from a pizza restaurant when it eventually arrives. Uh, I need to do some work on it before I can uh, even unveil it. So that's something that just always gets pushed back in the queue. I've got lots of these parts with... Dr. Inferno stickers on. They're usually not very useful parts, these, you see. Uh, so basically, they tend to cost nothing to buy, like, you know, a couple of pennies each. So when I just see a sticker with Dr. Inferno's logo on, I think I'd better buy all they've got, uh, which in this case seem to be four, uh, because then I can pull off the sticker, uh, you know the technique I'll use, uh, and then just apply them to, I don't know, cargo or any other workings as well. So they're really good. Uh, and they are from the set 8632 Swamp Raid from 2009, where they are on the kind of, uh, well, what would it be, a jet ski type vehicle on the back. 
And that's quite a cool set, that, actually, with Break Jaw, uh, Play Feature, and Robo Crocodiles. Although normal crocodiles are actually quite dangerous already, aren't they? Uh, so I don't know why you need to <laughs> have them under uh, control. But anyway, then we've got a couple of Vodafone parts for my phone shop. Uh, the panel is from a lovely little build, Ferrari F1 Racer 8362, which is a pretty cool minifigure scale uh, Formula One racer, really, especially with the fact that it's got a pullback motor within there. Uh, I think that's really good. Uh, but the other one, which is just kind of the logo on its own, which I'll again pull off this piece, no doubt, uh, is from the 8654. Scuderia Ferrari truck. Hopefully, I pronounced that right this time uh, from 2005. So, I think I've definitely got enough phone stickers now to do that phone store. So, we should be all right there. A couple of these green kind of mop pieces, which have been on one of the Chinese New Year sets, but also on the more recent 40531 Lars Family Homestead Kitchen from 2022, which is a bit yawn if you ask me. Um, I mean, wow. When we had everything in Star Wars, what we really needed was a Star Wars kitchen. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel there for scenes to uh, include. Um, and what got me as well is it didn't even have the printed Bantha milk, uh, sort of blue milk, one by one brick in that set, uh, like you did in that that very rare poly bag. Um, you know, it's just it's just that coloured one by one plain brick. I mean. You know, help us out here, Lego. We need that piece uh, in quantity, preferably, and you aren't helping us at all. Anyway, that's in the little sort of dome in the counter there. I've got a loose magnet and a loose magnet holder, which I should definitely not try and break when I push it in. And that's just so I can play around with magnets a little bit more and try and make some interesting builds. They used to use these quite a lot on all the Aquanaut sets, where they put them on uh, arms, much like these bendy arms here. Uh, with a magnet on the end to pick up like containers that would have the other magnet on uh, and maybe I'll use it like that I don't know but they're quite expensive and hard to get now uh, but they were on sets like 1822 C Claw 7 from 1995 which has got a very cool cockpit indeed uh, though obviously if I am going to use this magnet I'm going to need a minimum of two aren't I it just occurs to me anyway so there's one there's half of it half of the equation in hand Talking of Under the Sea and Tridents, these two tiles come from that same uh, submarine we looked at earlier with the great big Tridents on it. Uh, unsurprising, perhaps, 7773 Tiger Shark Attack. Uh, so it's good to have those. I'll be using those on my buildings. They're, they're printed, though, so I have to use them on the tiles. But on a sticker that is, ooh, looks pretty mucky. Hopefully that's just surface muck and not underneath sticker muck. But that's another yellow tile that I'll be using under the sea for a repair bay, unsurprisingly. <laughs> and that's from the uh, Sentai Fortress 7709 from Exoforce. We've seen that recently as well. I think I've got enough of those now. One shoe piece, two of these sort of weird shaped gun type pieces. Might be using those for the SSP, you never know. Should I say it in full? Super secret police? <coughs> yep. <laughs> uh, one cow horn which I'm not using for a cow. Ooh, so what are you using it for, Robin? Well, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, then we've got a money bag with a dollar sign on, which is just obligatory if we're going to have a bank robbery in my city. Uh, so that is from the character Cheetah from the DC Superheroes uh, minifigure series. I'm thinking of course I can't remember if I mentioned this before I'm thinking of calling the street that uh, the ultra agent scene is on and the alien invasion sort of is on and all that calamity street because there's so much sort of <laughs> random goings on uh, uh, on that street all next door to each other so I, if I have a, a bank robbery then the brick bank is now located there so maybe it should be coming out of there and continue the absolute mayhem that is happening on calamity street <laughs> anyway a oh, Robert should be holding that in his hand, shouldn't he? Definitely. No problem there. Right, then we also have a little hedgehog. Now, this is a bit doe-eyed, and I've kind of given in to, you know, temptation. I was thinking, no, I'm not buying that for a long time. But I do like hedgehogs, so I kind of gave in. It's a bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. It'd be better if it was a bit smaller. It's a bit of a massive um, hedgehog. <laughs> the fattest hedgehog you've ever seen at the moment. Uh, but that came... Oh, it's called Oscar, by the way, this one, in the uh, Friends set 41034, Squashed Hedgehog. 
Oh, no, sorry, that's not its name. Uh, no, it's called Summer Caravan. That's right. Uh, no, I would never squash a hedgehog. I'm a hedgehog fan, definitely. So don't worry about that. So we'll see if we can put him somewhere appropriate in the city. Then we've got another panel from a agent set with the Doctor Inferno logo. And this one's got a shark with what looks like rockets on its back. So that's uh, a very good idea for my city, I'm sure. We'll see that in the future. Uh, that came with the set 8635 Mobile Command Center from 2008. Yeah, that can be used under the sea, can't it? And we'll have the shark with the uh, rockets on its back. That'll be fantastic. Then final bag with what looks like some quite minor pieces, but I can assure you they are not. Well, maybe these are relatively common and maybe these are relatively common. Now, these are chainsaw uh, bits. I thought I could make them into some really interesting tools for under the sea or maybe even little scooters or just handles for something else. So I was just interested to play around with those. I mean, they're a very interesting shape, aren't they? Very nice indeed. Uh, a Lime Technic brick. I need that for one of my advert builds. That's very important. We've got a white tile, which I can't remember what that's for, but it's something important. But it's actually these, you maybe wouldn't think that, that are incredibly hard to get. I need two pairs of them, and this is the second pair. And I think, I think, I think, I think that this might be the last pieces I need for another challenge build to be completed. Yes, and that's all I'm going to say on it at the moment, but you'll see these relatively soon. And it is quite funny, actually. It was a very difficult challenge, um, but yeah, these may be the final pieces for that. So thank goodness I've got those. Wow, so that is it. That is the whole lot, empty box now. Uh, but this has been an absolutely amazing haul for many, many different reasons. The first one being the vast generosity from Barry of all this classic uh, castle stuff that is so appropriately timed because I will be buying that big castle when it comes out I tell you uh, I'm waiting on the large roller coaster uh, just because well there's no gift of purchase at the moment I've spent a lot recently there's kind of no rush to get that in my mind I will get it I think because I kind of have to uh, but my next purchase may well be the big castle uh, in about a month's time so yeah they'll go fantastically with that and then this, wow, ammunition for future builds. We've got stuff for a phone shop, stuff under the sea, stuff for a bank robbery, stuff for a secret advert, another secret advert. Uh, what else we got? Some sort of refrigerated wagon or container or something. Loads of stickered pieces. Oh, we've got improvements to past builds. Loads of bendy arm bits, glow-in-the-dark stuff. Oh, so much stuff to have fun with over the coming weeks. I'm really excited. And some of this, I just need to get my hands on straight away and finish off those old builds that I've been really waiting to show you. Super cool haul. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And if you want to send something to a future brick call, you can to the usual address, just like Barry did. You don't have to be as wonderfully generous as he was. <laughs> Believe you me, that is absolutely amazing. Anyway, uh, next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be doing a mock build for Friday. And I'm tempted to do some uh, 3D adverts, actually, because of all the pieces that we've got in this haul. I'm just dying to get those built. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to think about it and just check that I do have everything that I need. Uh, then on Monday, I think we'll be doing a train build. And then, well, next Wednesday, we'll do another haul, of course. So until all of that, see you!